Hello, my name is Margarita Corrie. The title of this presentation is The Development in Use of a Structured Instrument for Assessing the Quality of Complex Interventions. This presentation is linked to a published systematic review titled Telephone Interventions Delivered by Healthcare Professionals for Providing Education and Psychosocial Support for Informal Caregivers of Adults with Diagnosed Illnesses. It was published in January 2019 and is referenced at the end of this presentation. The review included 21 randomised studies and focused on telephone-only interventions. 19 of the included studies compared telephone support interventions with usual care and 2 compared telephone-only interventions with non-telephone professional support interventions. The aim of this presentation is to provide an overview of the development and application of criteria we use to assess the quality of interventions reported in studies included in the aforementioned Cochrane Review. We adhere to our pre-specified protocol by developing an intervention quality assessment instrument based on Section 5 of the Cochrane Consumers Group Standard Data Extraction Form, which is adapted for our specific review. The quality assessment form was tailored to evaluating telephone-only interventions and was piloted prior to use in this review. So we started off by mapping Section 5 of our data extraction form, which required the team to extract data on nine key aspects of intervention quality. So intervention name, aims and rationale, what was done, who delivered the intervention, where was the intervention provided, when and how often or how much of the intervention was provided? Was the intervention tailored? Was the intervention modified or adapted? And how well was the intervention delivered? We categorised these nine areas into four main sections for our intervention quality assessment instrument. The extent to which the intervention was defined was mapped to item one and two of the data extraction form. What was done was mapped to item 3 to 5 and 7 and 8. Intervention intensity was mapped to item 6 and fidelity of the intervention was mapped to item 9. Within each of these sections we had specified eva specific evaluation questions. Not all items are of equal importance. Consequently we had certain principles which underpin the design of the evaluation instrument. So items such as interventionist standardisation, were considered to be of more essential to intervention quality than items such as the researchers or authors stating that the intervention was delivered in accordance with the trial protocol. We felt that all essential aspects of intervention quality should be addressed by the study authors to receive a high quality score. There was an acknowledgement that journal work count restrictions limit the detail that authors can provide on the intervention and its delivery in a published paper. We also acknowledge that items may not always be explicitly reported, but may be referred to by study authors in various sections of the report, e.g. the discussion section. Consequently, it was considered important that the instrument enable the review team to allocate a weighting for partial or probable explanations in published reports. This slide presents a sample of the items in the intervention evaluation instrument. Essential items were highlighted with an asterisk. All items with an asterisk were considered essential for a high quality rating. So, for example, did the researchers or authors provide a clear definition of the intervention so it could be replicated? This was considered essential for a high quality rating on the scoring system. So, our original evaluation instrument had 24 items. The form was piloted by all authors individually on one of the included studies prior to use on all of the included studies. Following the pilot, all review authors met and reviewed the original form. Amendments post-pilot phase resulted in a 22-item evaluation form. So we met amendments following the pilot phase in three main areas. Detail was added to item to three items to clarify how the item was scored, two items were rephrased, two items were deleted as the consensus was that the content was captured in another item. 
So the clarifications made uh, for the three items were for item 1, item 2 and item 21. For item 1 on the questionnaire, did the researchers or authors provide a clear definition of the intervention so it could be replicated? This was elaborated upon so that all reviewers interpreted it in the same way. The clarification inserted is in the blue text and enabled the team to score yes or partly yes if the authors had indicated the type of intervention and had provided an overview of its content, but very in-depth details such as the manual did not have to be included. For item two, were the goals or aim of the intervention clearly stated? As not all authors set a clear statement on the aim or goal of an intervention, the review team felt that the aim of the intervention could be very similar or integrated into the aim of the study. And the text, this may be similar or the same to the aim or goal of the study, was inserted to allow all reviewers to take this into consideration when evaluating the intervention. Not all members of the team conducting the pilot fully understood what was required for item 21. Did the authors indicate that caregiver receipt of the intervention was monitored? Consequently, this was clarified as caregiver's understanding of and use of the intervention. Items 12 and 18 were reworded. So, for example, for item 12, did the researchers or authors indicate how any potential risk of intervention contamination across the study groups was addressed or monitored? This was changed to, was there any potential risk of intervention contamination across the study groups? This item was reverse scored. So the ideal answer to this would be, uh, no, there was no risk of intervention contamination across the study groups. So this was reverse scored to a yes. Um, in order to be included as a high score or a high quality rating. Items 23 and 24 were deleted. The pilot group felt that the two items were not essential as the response was captured in item 21. Consequently, these were deleted. So our scoring system then. The interventions were scored as either high, medium or low. To attain a high score, the majority of items, 60% or more, had to receive a yes response to the items on the quality evaluation instrument. All of the items with an asterisk had to be included in the responses, except item 12, which was reverse scored, and therefore had to have a score of no. To attain a medium score, 60% or more of the items had to receive at least a probable or partly yes score, or, and or have a probably or partly or yes score on some or all of the items marked with an asterisk. Low scores were given to interventions that scored a no to 60% or more of the items on the quality intervention instrument or no to all of the items marked with an asterisk except item 12 which would obtain a score of yes or partly yes for low score marking. So we obtained an overall score in the items as follows. We added all the non-applicable scores to the response section that got the most scores and divided that number by the total possible response scores. And the total possible response scores was 22. So, and then we multiplied the answer by 100 to get the percentage. So for example, if a study scores as follows, nine items yes, three items probably yes, eight items no, and five items in A. If all of the items marked with asterisk get a score of yes, except for item 12, which should ideally have a score of no, then the result was calculated as follows. Nine yes plus five in A is equal to 14 over 22. So that's equal to 0 0.56 or 56%. That score is below the cutoff score of greater than or equal to 60%, so a recalculation needed to be made so that we could allow for the yes, for the probably yes or partly yes um, responses. So in this instance, 68% uh, of the items scored a yes and probably yes. So the intervention is categorized as a medium quality, providing some of the items marked with an asterisk to get a yes score and or Item 12 gets a no score. 
So how do we use the instrument in our review? All interventions in the included papers were evaluated. Two sets of review authors evaluated all of the interventions, with each set reviewing half, and one of the authors, myself, was the constant across the two sets. So consequently, I evaluated all of the included studies and I worked with one other member of the team um, to decide on the overall quality rating. Um, use of the instrument enabled us to make an overall judgment as to the quality of the interventions used, that is, whether they scored high, medium or low quality, and enabled us to present these in table form. Of the interventions evaluated in the 20 included studies, two only were rated as high, 16 as medium, and two as low quality. And this is the link to the full um, published Cochrane review where you'll see that table. And this is an extract from the table where you can see on the left-hand column we have the author's name and um, year of publication and uh, the row at the top across uh, for each of the items in the quality intervention evaluation instrument. And then the final column is for our overall score, whether it got high, medium or low quality, based on how we calculated the scores. So in conclusion, the use of the intervention quality assessment instrument enabled the review authors to factor the quality of the interventions into the discussion of the overall completeness and applicability of the evidence and the review's overall conclusion. Using the quality of intervention evaluation tool in our review, emphasise the importance of and the need for reporting the development and delivery aspects of complex interventions in healthcare, which really should form part of the journal reporting guidelines. This is the reference, so thank you for listening.